All right, so the good news is a lot of um, a lot of chapter four, section four is like application of what we've done already with our unit circle. If you're still uncomfortable with like using the unit circle, then this is the this is your chance to fix that because you definitely need it with this. And then there's a little bit more application between like coordinate points and that kind of stuff. So we start with just the reviewing of what we already know about our unit circle that our sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x, and then all the reciprocal functions are there. Now this first box has r in it. So what happens when r is not one is how this changes. So in our unit circle, r is one because the radius is one. But if the r is no longer one, meaning I get like a coordinate point to set up a triangle, then I can also find it using this, y over r, x over r, y over x. Again, unit circle, the r is one, so I don't need the denominators. But if I'm given a coordinate point that is not on my unit circle, that is outside my unit circle, like three, four, or something like that, I would, try, I would set up a triangle, but it may be a triangle in a quadrant specific to my unit circle. So it's kind of like the overlap of the two things, the right triangle trig also moving around your unit circle. That entire first box is also just Sokotoa. It's just if you set up the triangle inside the circle, it would be the radius as the hypotenuse. The radius. Yeah, so it, so I'll show, I'm going to draw it out, but yeah, that would be as if I was moving around the circle. That's my paper clip. Okay, this we know, right? This is our degree measurement. So it goes from zero to 360 all the way around in degrees if it was um, negative, it's going to go the other direction. It goes clockwise. And then our, um, our radians are on there as well. At this point, you should be able to get given an angle and you should be able to tell me what quadrant it's in. Yeah. All right. So again, at this point, I should be able to tell you an angle and you should be able to locate it either by just knowing what it looks like or by doing our tricks of like, is it even odd? Is it a half or bigger than a half? That kind of thing. And then if it was in degrees, is it in between 0 and 90, 90 and 180, 180, 270, 270, and 360? So you could see these things in either radians or degrees. You'd want to be able to locate what quadrant that in, they're in because that would determine the positive or negative signs. These are your quadrant angles. So these are the only four things that you cannot use a right triangle on. So if I said to find sine of 90 degrees, you can't set up a triangle and find it using opposite over hypotenuse. If I said sine of zero degrees, if I said sine of 180, obviously not because you're outside of a circle. I mean, a triangle in general, 270 or even 360. You wouldn't be able to do it. This is when you have to use your unit circle. So I know at zero, my coordinate point is one zero. At pi over two, which is 90 degrees, it's zero one. At pi, which is 180 degrees, it's negative one zero. And at three pi over two, which is 270 degrees, my coordinate point is 0, 1. And then that's where all this stuff comes from. So remember the sign is the y as you move around your unit circle. At 0, the y is 0. At pi over 2, the y is 1. At pi, the y is 0. And at 270, the y is negative 1. Oh, this should be negative 1. The cosine is your x. So as you move around your unit circle, at 0, the x is 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, it's negative 1. And at 3 pi over 2, it's 0. And then the tangent is the y over the x. At 0, it's 0. At pi over 2, it's undefined because it would be 1 over 0. At pi, it's 0. And at 3 pi over 2, it's undefined again. So tangent is undefined at the top and the bottom because they would both be over 0. This is not like a chart you have to memorize. You should be able to look at your unit circle, use those coordinate points to find it, okay? So there's no, there's no need to memorize it. It's just the application of it. You can use triangles. So something like this that says determine the exact values of the six trig functions of each angle theta. Now, how do I know the difference between my unit circle values and these is that 4, 3 is too big to be in my unit circle, right? The biggest value on my unit circle is 1 as you're moving all the way around. So as soon as you bypass that, we're not talking about 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90 triangles. We're just using our unit circle, meaning a circle, circular shape, to set up my actual triangles. So if this coordinate point here is 4, 3, that means I moved to the right 4, and I moved up 3. Theta is in this corner here. So if I wanted to find all six trig functions, I'd have to complete that triangle. 
How do I complete that triangle? Mm -hmm. You can't. So this is exact. Pythagorean theorem. It's up. It's always meant. Yeah. The Pythagorean theorem, which is 3 squared plus 4 squared, equals this is the radius. So it's also the hypotenuse. It could be anything. That's 9, 16. Square root 25, which is 5. This is one of your Pythagorean triples. So I would add them on the top. 3, 4, 5 is the most common one. 5, 12, 13. 6, 8, 10, 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17. I would say those are probably the most common. There are more, but I would say those are the most common. Okay, less common, but still triples would be 9, 12, 15, and then 15, 20, 25. So you use those to eliminate these kinds of steps. So I could have done 3, 4, and then filled in that other side without having to use the Pythagorean theorem. Then I'm going to find the 6 trig figure, 6 trig function. So sine, cosine, tangent. Sine would be from theta being here, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, 4 fifths, and then tangent, 3 fourths. And then just flip them. 5 thirds, 5 fourths, and... Four thirds. For B, I'm going to close my triangle in this way because I need it to be a right triangle. So the X here would be a negative 8 because I moved left 8 and the Y would be positive 15. One of the triples we just went over is 5, 12, 15. That's the hypotenuse. So even though theta is out here, it can also go in here to set up the ratios. You want to make sure you set up that right triangle that way. So now sine 15 over 17, cosine, negative 8 over 17, tangent, 15 over negative 8. And then we flip them. Okay, so now it doesn't give me the picture. It says the point on the terminal side of an angle is in standard position. Determine the exact values of the six trig functions of the angle. So if I have negative 4, 7, and I were to draw this on a coordinate grid, the negative 4 would move me left. The positive 7 would move up. So we're saying this is the end point of my angle. I'm going to close it in here. I'm going to put theta again from the terminal side to the x-axis where it stops is four seven part of a triple no, no. so how do i find the radius <coughs> the theorem i can make it negative four or positive four squared it doesn't matter we're always going to square it so it's always going to be positive so c would equal the square root of 65 which breaks down to 5 and 13 doesn't break down any further. So I keep it as square root 65. Again, radius or hypotenuse is always positive. So then here comes my six trig functions. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 7 over square root 65, and we rationalize every time. 7 square root 65 over 65. Cosine is negative 4 over square root 65, and we rationalize negative 4 square root 65 over 65. Tangent is 7 over negative 4. That negative could be in the front, it could be in the top, it could be on the bottom. It doesn't matter as long as it's one of those places. Good so far? Okay, so now when we flip, what's the trick to flipping and not doing as much work? Good. Flip before we rationalize. So come back here and flip. So it would be the square root of 65 over 7. Negative square root 65 over 4 and negative 4 sevenths. Otherwise, you're going to end up rationalizing something you already rationalized. You're doing double the work.
questions on that one? All right, B, positive three, negative four. Now which direction am I moving? To the right, three, down four. So this angle, whoa, that's not what I meant to do. This angle, I don't even know how I did that, is in the fourth quadrant. What's my hypotenuse? Five. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Sine is negative four-fifths. Cosine is three-fifths. Tangent is negative four-thirds. Yeah. The value is what makes it negative. Because if you squared it, it would still be the same. Cosecant, negative five-fourths. Secant, five-thirds. Cotangent, negative three-fourths. Now, if you think about our like acronym, all students take calculus, right? If we remember that, and I know that I'm in that fourth quadrant, the trig function the, of the original three that should be positive is cosine, which obviously means secant should be positive, and all the rest of them should be negative. So it should be consistent with what you find using your triangles. All this stuff overlaps. Good so far. Okay, this is what we just talked about. So all students take calculus. They also say all snakes, teas, chickens, and a smart trig class. I don't care, remember the acronyms. I don't care how you remember them. That just helps you as you go around your unit circle. So we did this already. This is when the book brings it is, but we did this already. Yeah, or that one. All right, name the quadrant in which theta lies if cotangent is greater than zero and, or, and sorry, sine is less than zero. So if you think about your quadrants, right, and all students take calculus. Start with the first one. For cotangent to be greater than zero, what does greater than zero mean? Positive. positive. So where is tangent, because that's the original one, where is tangent positive? Three. Quadrant one and quadrant three. Then I go to the second part, which says sine is less than zero, which means sine is negative. Where is sine negative? Negative. Three and four, right? Because this is an and statement, we're looking for where they overlap, which would be quadrant three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this one says, given that the cotangent of theta is negative four-thirds and the sine is greater than zero, I'll find the following. So the first thing I want to look at is that it says the cotangent of theta is negative four-thirds. So what sides are those if it's cotangent? It's adjacent over opposite, right? But this is negative four-thirds. Is this a negative four over a positive three? Is this a four over a negative three? How do I know where that sign goes? That's the second part. Good. So I have to figure out where would cotangent be negative and sign would be positive. So where's cotangent negative? Start there. Second and fourth, right? Cotangent would be the same as tangent, so they would be negative in those two quadrants. Where would sign be greater than zero? Second quadrant. So I know I have to be in the second quadrant. That's what that piece of information is telling me. So now when I do the four thirds, I know this is adjacent and this is opposite. That means I'm moving this way, right? And I'm moving this way. Which of those parts is going to get the negative? The negative four and a positive three. Sure. So theta is here. Yep, it always goes wherever my radius is, whether it's in the first quadrant, second, whatever it is, between that and my x-axis. So if I have something drawn here, it goes here. If I have something drawn here, it goes here. It's always between the end of the angle and the x-axis. Never here, never here, never here, never here. Is it always closest to like the origin? Yeah. All right, so then what's my missing side? Five, and it's always positive because it's the radius. And now I fill it in, right? 
So opposite would be 3 over 5. We have the cosine would be negative 4 over 5. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, negative 5 fourths. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, 5 thirds. So if there's a negative involved, right, even if there's not a negative involved, now we're moving around our circle because that could be, if it was positive, they could both be positive or they could both be negative. There will always be one other piece of information that tells you where that quadrant is. All right, this one says the terminal side of theta lies on the given line in the specific quadrant. Find the values of the six trig functions of theta by finding a point on the line. So I have the graph of a line that is y equals 3x. How do I graph this line? Start at the origin. Start at the origin. And then my slope is? Good. 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So here's my line. I'm going to put theta in the first quadrant. And I'm going to close in a little triangle using that 0, 0, and then the terminal point, which is the next one, where I moved up 3 into the right one. So now, what goes where as far as values go? What's the horizontal distance? One. What's the vertical distance? Three. three. What would be my hypotenuse? I have to find it, right? One squared plus three squared would equal C squared. Square root of 10. So now if I want to find the six trig functions, <coughs> sine opposite over hypotenuse, rationalize it, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, rationalize it, tangent opposite over adjacent, which is just three. Cos it actually will usually tell you that it's in, it, it would either be here, it would tell you if it's not in that first quadrant. So it would say in the third quadrant, like use the terminal side on the third quadrant. It would say something like that. If not, it's implied first quadrant. Unless it was negative, obviously, then you'd move in the other direction. Yeah. Cosecant. I'm going to go back to before I rationalize. So root 10 over 3. Secant. Back to before I rationalize. Root 10. And cotangent. Flip 3. And I get 1 third. So it's like the same thing, setting up a triangle, figure out your trig function, setting up a triangle, figure out your trig function, except that it's written in like 17 different formats. Sometimes it's a coordinate point. Sometimes it's a fraction with a trig function. Sometimes it's a line. Questions on that one? Now we're back to, oh, this should be here. Our unit circle, okay? I know it's unit circle based because these are angles that are my quadrant angles, right? So anything that gives me the angle that's one of the unit circle angles, you can use your unit circle. These are quadrant angles, which means I cannot also use a right triangle. I have to use my quadrants. So again, we said this is zero and this coordinate point would be one, zero. This is pi over two and this coordinate point would be zero, one. This is pi, negative one, zero. And this is three pi over two, zero, negative one. Sine is which coordinate? The y. So what's the y at pi? Zero. Zero. Cotangent is what ratio? X over, x over y. So the x at 3 pi over 2 is 0. Okay. So 0 over negative 1 is what? Zero. Good. Good. All right. Here's reference angles. So the reference angle of theta is the acute angle theta prime. This little apostrophe is read as prime. Formed by the terminal side of theta and the horizontal axis. So we've been drawing reference angles this whole time. We just didn't give them a name yet. 
To find the reference angle, we find the difference between the angle and the x-axis. So this is the easiest way to learn this. Draw yourself your coordinate grid. If you are in the first quadrant, then your reference angle is your original angle. If it's 30 degrees, it's 30 degrees. If it's pi over 6, it's pi over 6. We don't change it in the first quadrant. Mm -hmm. If it's in the first quadrant, the reference angle is the distance from the angle to the x-axis, right? So if I drew an angle here and it was 75 degrees, the, di the distance from 75 to the x-axis is 75. When you move into the second quadrant, these have to be acute, right? So they have to be, not, well, actually, they have to be 90 or less than 90. So it says acute, but it also can be 90 degrees. 90 degrees, reference angle is 90 degrees. As you go into the second quadrant, if I wanted to find the distance between an angle and the x-axis, I would do 180 minus that angle or pi minus the angle if it's in radians. No, we haven't done this yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your thing in compliment. Sure. In the third quadrant, it is the reverse. Theta minus 180 or theta minus pi. And in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus the angle or 2 pi minus the angle. This is for the reference angle and then we're going to find trig functions of reference angles. Yeah. Or it gives you an angle and it asks for the reference angle. So this is how you can use your right triangle trig triangles Sokotoa to find trig functions if you don't use your unit circle and that angle is bigger than 90 degrees. So if I said find the sine of 135 degrees, if you set up a right triangle, it's going to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Obviously, 135 is not in there, right? So we figure out the reference angle for 135, which is 45, and then we set up that kind of triangle. So the reference angle is how you can use your special right triangles with any angle is the idea. All right, so this says find the reference angle theta, theta prime and sketch theta and theta prime in standard position. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at my 2 pi over 3 and figure out what quadrant that's in. What quadrant is that in? Second quadrant, right? It's bigger than a half but less than a whole. So 2 pi over 3 would be here. So if I wanted to find the reference angle, I'm going to do pi minus 2 pi over 3. And I get 3 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, which is? Good. Pi over 3. Yep. Yes. What is the radians? Can you also just use the denominator? So your special triangle, your special angles work like that, but not all the angles work like that. Right. Like if I give you 5 pi over 7, it's not pi over 7. It's 2 pi over 7. Does that make sense? So special angles, yes, but not all of them. So like over three, over four, over six. Yep, the special ones, the over threes, the over fours, the over twos, the over sixes are always going to be that oh, pi over that. But you won't be only doing this for those. That's just gotta be careful. So if it asks me to draw both the reference angle and the original angle in standard position, that means my original angle, which was two pi over three, would be, that's, there's my original angle, and then my reference angle is going to be pi over 3. So this would be theta prime, and this would be theta. Then I go to 9 pi over 2. This is not on my traditional unit circle, because 9 over 2 is what? In mixed number form. What is 9 divided by 2 in mixed number form? 4 
and one half pi or four and pi over two. So the even tells me I'm going all the way around here. So I could go all the way around. That's two pi, that's four pi, half pi puts it at the top. So this would be my original angle. The reference angle is what? Just pi over two. So the rule on angles is if it's a special angle, if it's over two, if it's over three, if it's over four, if it's over six, then your reference angle is pi over whatever denominator you started with. That does not apply to all denominators though, so be careful. So theta prime is pi over two, yep. And then you wanted to graph the original one, which is the yellow, and the, and the reference angle, which is pi over two. So this is why it's fast to know your over twos, your over threes, your over six. Like that's why it's fast to know those things. Because if I gave you something like 17 pi over two, I know it's an over two, right? So I know, I, all I have to do is figure out is at the top or is at the bottom. If I gave you 17 pi over three, I know it's an over three. I know the coordinate point at over three. I just got to figure out what quadrant lies by doing the mixed number and then the around. You want the reference angle in radians? If it gives it to you in radians, you want it in radians. If it gives it to you in degrees, you want it in degrees. Yeah, so if it said something like, 110 degrees, then I want to give that as 70 degrees. Yep. Correct. Yep. All right, so this one says, find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle without the calculator. You already know how to do these because I taught you how to do them the first time around without this, but now this is like when the book would have brought it in. So 5 pi over 4. First of all, it's an over 4, which tells you what? What's the coordinate point? Root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. What's the tangent? 1, right? Because it would be y over x. Now all I got to do is figure out where does 5 pi over 4 lay as far as a quadrant, which would be where? Third quadrant. So these are both negative. The tangent will be positive. So now I know sine negative root 2 over 2, cosine negative root 2 over 2, tangent 1, and then we flip them. Cosecant, this is just negative root 2, because you'd flip it and rationalize it. Secant, also negative root 2, and cotangent, positive 1. So you've already been doing these, okay? But the idea is you could do those that way, or I could say if it's an over 4, that means my reference angle is pi over 4, which is the same thing as 45 degrees. I could draw out a 45, 45, 90 triangle where this is 1, 1, and root 2. And I could do SOHCAHTOA to get all of these values. But then I would need to know that this is in the third quadrant where the x would be negative, the y would be negative, and the tangent would be positive. So you get to choose. Do you want to stick to your right triangles or do you want to do the coordinate points on your unit circle? It's completely up to you. You just got to make sure you know how to do one or the other. Yep. If it is unit circle base, which is what this angle is. If it gives you the angle, you're assuming that it's one. One, one, and root two. Otherwise, it would give you the value. Like it would say that it, you would actually have the coordinates, like an x, y, where it would be different. You're welcome. All right, now we got the calculator. And again, we've already done these. I would check my mode because the first one has to be in what? Radians. radians. And that would be 1 over the tangent of 4.3. I know it's in radians because it doesn't have a degree symbol. 1 divided by tangent 4.3 and you'd get 0 0.4375. And then for the second one, I'd have to change my mode back to degrees. And it's 1 divided by the cosine of 213. Negative 1.1924. And I will warn you that on the quiz, it was, those were all or nothing. So you had to be really careful. They were five points, but it was either like you got it or you didn't. And sadly, people put the wrong mode. Okay, this 
is actually baby stepping our way into what is 4, 7, which is the inverse trig function. This says find two solutions of each equation and give your answer in degrees and in radians. Don't use a calculator, which means we're going to use our unit circle. So I'm going to pull it in because I think it's easier to see it when you've got it in front of you. Okay, so what this says is if sine of theta is one half, give me the options that would be theta. So it's basically saying, give me the angle in which my sine is one half. So sine is which coordinate? The X or the Y? The Y. So it's telling me, go to your unit circle and give me all the angles in which your Y is one half. So where on my unit circle is Y a positive one half? Pi over six and five pi over six. So it says, give your answer in degrees and radians, which would be degrees would be 30 degrees and and 150 degrees and radians would be pi over six and five pi over six yep so i'll probably give it to the day before like a small one and let you fill it in again yep and then you'll get to use that yeah just for time purposes yep sure you just you wouldn't need to fill in everything that time is the difference B says the sine of theta is negative one-half. So now I'm looking for where my y is negative one-half, which happens third quadrant and fourth quadrant, which would be 210 degrees and 330 degrees, and then 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. If I had given you the cosine, you'd be looking at the x's. If I'd give you the tangent, you'd be looking at the y over x's, right, which is the benefit of adding the tangents on as well. Yep. So when you go to your unit circle, right, you're looking for where the y is a positive one half. And it's here. And it's here. Yep. Then I was looking for where the y was negative one half. But it could give you cosine and it could give you tangent. It could give you other trig functions. These were just both sine. Questions on that one? Yeah. These will be on the unit circle. Yep. Otherwise, you'd have to have a calculator. Yep. All right. Last question says the displacement from equilibrium of an oscillating weight suspended by a spring is given by y of t equals 2 sine 6t, where y is the displacement in centimeters and t is the time in seconds. Find the displacement when a, t is 0, b, t is 1 fourth, and c, t is 1 half. You already had one of these in the homework, if you remember it. If I give you the equation, that's what it's doing. It's saying y of t is 2 sine 6t, and then it wants to find a when t is 0, b when t is 1 fourth, and c when t is 1 half. So if you look at the first one, if I plug it in, I get 2 sine of 6 times 0. What's 6 times 0? Zero? 0. Do we know sine at 0? It's 0. 2 times 0 would be? 0. So that would make sense. If I was going to pull a string before I even pull it, if it's at 0, it's going to be at 0, right? There's no displacement. Then I go to B, 2 sine 6 times 1 fourth, 2 sine, this would be 3 halves. Radians or degrees? Three. Radians. Do we know the radian of 3 over 2 on my unit circle? No. Why not? What's wrong with it? Pi is not there. This is not a unit circle based angle. You would have a calculator for a question like this. Understand the difference? So 0, pi over 3, pi over 6, anything like those you could do without a calculator like A. But something like this, that is not a unit circle-based angle. I know it's in radians because there is no degree symbol in my initial equation. And it didn't, maybe it would even say it if it was in degrees and it wasn't in my original. This did neither. So then I just literally make sure my mode is in radians. And I do 2 sine 3 divided by 2. And I get 1.99498. So if it said to round to the nearest fourth place, which it didn't, it would bump 
1.9950 would be the displacement. If it said round to the nearest 10, it'd be two. And then the last one, two sine of six times a half is two sine three. Again, there's no pi there. If there was a pi, this would be unit circle base. There's not. So I literally do two times the sine of three and I get 0. 0.2822. Trying to think if I think it tells you what to round to on website. I'm gonna check it right now. Questions on anything we talked about today? Because that's it, we're done. It's a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of repeated stuff, so hopefully it's not too bad.